Anyone else ever swept and accidentally swept some of the crumbs under the oven? Or, you know, you wipe the counters down and you forget to lift up the appliances? Just me? Cool. Cool, cool. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Kira Wackett. Thanks for joining me for another video as we work to empower and equip you with the confidence and skills to write your own story so that you can live your life on purpose. Today we're gonna to talk about effort and life design. I was, and still sometimes am, the person who would vacuum the house and conveniently go around the furniture rather than move it. Rather than make the bed and straighten the covers each night, I'd just throw the crumpled heap over me and go to bed, usually in whatever shirt I happened to have been wearing that day. I would overbook myself and not take time to actually sit and eat a meal, meaning I eat while doing six or seven other things. I would not take breaks or just be in the moment pretty much ever. I'd rush to complete my checklist rather than invest in the project or task itself, sometimes giving 50 or 60% to a task rather than my full 100% so I can get it done and move on. This happens so much that sometimes I would mentally be on the next thing before I had finished what I was doing and then I'd get flustered if anything held me up. Any of this resonating with any of you? You get so caught up in getting through the next thing, you just rush through whatever task is in front of you. Well, as we start to think about what we can do, we need to first walk it back and say, where does this come from? This comes from an overemphasis on completion-oriented thinking, or trying to minimize the time and energy involved in a task to get on to the next thing. It's about living with your brain one step ahead of the now and being controlled by the pressures of urgency and production. It's rooted in a belief that we must always be doing and producing rather than being. It says that we're valued by what we do, more specifically what we complete, than who we are. But I think it's important that we come back to the cost. What is the cost of living this way? Well, over time, this literal and figurative cutting of corners creates a lazy or kind of half-baked brain that's overworked, anxious, and drowning in self-deprecation. It allows incomplete thoughts and actions to be good enough and focuses on mass production and output versus high quality output and intentional engagement. The focus shifts from tending to the self and connecting to and living in our values to running ourselves ragged to do it all. It shifts us into thinking about the life and self as content or everything we can do and accomplish rather than seeing ourselves in context or enjoying or at least being present in each task and endeavor and not allowing the pressure to produce, sacrifice our how and why in what we do. So rather than taking time to warm up before a workout and stretch and replenish the body afterward, we rush through a workout, give our body no love or care and jump right back into all the other tasks we have to do. We eat lunch while answering emails and managing dozens of other tasks rather than tasting our food and listening to our bodies. We make to-do lists of 50 plus tasks to complete in a day rather than five or six, giving them our time, energy, and focus. We mark our lives as okay as is and keep chasing this ridiculous notion that we don't have time to be in the moment or engage in activities like self-care. So where does this lead us overall? In short, burnout. We're overworked, overwhelmed, constantly rushing, and out of touch with our physical and emotional feelings until our brain wipes out and crashes. It's why so many of us get caught in a cycle of go, 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 then crash in front of the TV at the end of the day. Because we're trying to do too much at the expense of ourselves. And honestly, for what? A low quality life and poor production output. Would you rather have a whole bag of Chips Ahoy or a one bakery fresh gooey chocolate chip cookie? Would you rather have a dozen cheap trinkets from the fair or one high quality locally made stuffed animal or wooden toy for your child? Would you rather have one nice pair of shoes that will last you for years or cheap poorly made shoes that hurt your feet every time you wear them and have to be replaced every few months? There's honestly no question who wouldn't want those other options. We would go for the higher quality and more fantastic experience in all of these. So why not do that in our day-to-day -day life? So think about this idea. How you do anything is how you do everything. 
If I half engage in one area of my life, I'm way more likely to do it in other areas. If I'm bad at setting boundaries at work, I'll have a much greater likelihood of being bad at setting them in my personal life. If I don't take time each day to eat, practice self-care, and give the brain a break, I'll likely build rules that make me feel like I'm not allowed to do this, and it'll become harder and harder to shift my thinking. If I rush from task to task, moment to moment, I'm always going to be on the chase. And even though not being present while I do the dishes may not seem like a big deal, not being present in moments with my daughter is. And the more I rush through my daily to-dos, the more I'm going to rush through my time with her. It's a way of living, and that ideology taints everything we do, say, think, and feel. If instead I make it a point to clean out the fridge every time I go to the grocery store and put new food in, I enjoy opening the fridge, and I don't feel shame about seeing old containers pile up or getting grossed out seeing food marks build up all over the place. If I take the extra 15 to 20 minutes each day to warm up and cool down with my workout, my body enjoys every other moment throughout the day and can show up with me in the other tasks that I do. And suppose I set boundaries at work about when I am and am not available via email or other communication. In that case, I'll have greater ease in setting these boundaries at home, and I won't allow things to carry over into my time with my family, loved ones, or myself. And suppose I make myself a priority in every moment, and I nurture my mind, body, and soul. In that case, I'll internalize that belief in all I do and stop being so easily swayed by the pressure of the world around me that I have to do or produce to meet some ridiculous standard of worth and value. So go back to this phrase. How you do anything is how you do everything. Show up to each thing you're doing with an invitation to yourself to be present. I'm not asking you to compromise your goals or to stop being productive but perhaps think about what it can mean to live a life of intentional productivity, where you invest the time up front and in everything you do to create systems, structures, and connections of meaning and ease. Now, before you go, let us know in the comments either one embarrassing half done project, you know, for my own moral support, because all of us have done this, or where you've invested maybe the 20, 30, 40, 50% because you were doing a million things or one way that you're gonna shift gears as you move forward. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit both that thumbs up button and subscribe to get an alert anytime new videos are released. And if you aren't getting the AR Insider emails yet, click the link in the show notes to get yourself on that list to get exclusive and supportive content in your inbox that I don't share anywhere else. Remember, you have the right to author your own story. So let's go get that pen back. I'll see you next week.